Hey everyone, PK here. Today I'm going to talk about why making money in property investing is so, so, so much easier than making money in the stock market. All right, and a little bit about how to actually do that. So if you um, want to make money in the, in the property market using data, then this video will be quite useful for you. Um, and if you do like it and you're watching this on Facebook, then just give it a like or a comment and that way the Facebook algorithm will show you more videos just like this. And if you're watching it on YouTube and you like it, then of course uh, subscribe down below and you'll see more videos like this every single day or every single couple of days. All right, so why is making money in the property market so much easier than making money in the stock market? So let's just think about how you make money in the stock market and bear with me, this is going to be um, useful. You make money in the stock market in its simplest sense by buying low and selling high. Okay, you buy a stock really low, cheap, and you sell it in the future, you know, when it has risen. Now, the thing about the stock market is that everyone is trying to do that. Okay, no one is buying a share or no one is buying a stock because they have some warm, fuzzy feeling um, that they want to help a company or they want to use that stock as some sort of charitable or, or philanthropic venture. Okay, every single person who buys a stock, whether it's one or a million stocks in the share market, in the stock market, buys for the intent of making a profit. <clears throat> okay, and I know. I used to be um, an investment banker covering oil and gas stocks, Shell, Woodside, Origin, um, you know, Rio Tinto, BHP, uh, Oil Search, etc. That was what I used to be doing 90 hours a week. It was pretty tough. And I know how hard it is to make money in the stock market because everyone is trying to do that. Now, juxtapose or compare that to the property market. Is everyone trying to make money in the property market? You as an um, aspiring property investor or an experienced property investor, you know, maybe you have a young family and you've already got a couple of properties all under the belt or you're starting your property journey. You know, you as a property investor want to make money in the, in the property market, but 70 or let's say 60 to 70% of people aren't really too bothered. Right, And the reason is that 60 to 70% of people in Australia who buy residential real estate buy it for the purpose of living in it. And yes, of course, no one's going to say no to capital growth. No one's going to say no to making money. But those people aren't buying and selling with the express intent, with the scientific intent to make money. Right? They just want shelter, they just want somewhere to live in, an emotive draw to a particular suburb, to a particular property, to a particular town, because that's where they want to house their family. Okay, And what that means is that gives us property investors or you know future aspiring property investors such an amazing head start in how to make money. Because in the stock market, you are competing against millions of cutthroat investors trying to beat you because the only way that you'll make money in the stock market is if you buy low and sell high. And that means that someone has to actually buy high, right? So someone thinks that that stock is going to go even higher and you think it's going to come down, therefore you'll sell. So another sophisticated person is betting against you, right? It's sophistication versus sophistication. Whereas in the property market, the majority of people who buy and sell residential real estate are not sophisticated. They are not buying with the intent of making money. They are not selling with the intent of making huge cash. And that puts us in such a terrific position, right? Because if you can educate yourself, if you can know more than those 60 to 70% of people then you are, <clears throat> you know, miles ahead of them and you can actually, you know, take advantage, right? It's a bit like running a 100 meter sprint, but, you know, 60 to 70% of your competitors are starting at 10 meters or 20 meters behind you. That's going to give you such a head start. That's going to give you such an advantage, 
right? In the stock market, we make money through long-term trading and short-term trading. Long-term trading means looking at the discount cash flows of an organization, seeing how it will perform over the next 5, 10, 15 years, and discounting or bringing those future cash flows, stick with me here, into the present and saying, okay, if this is the value of the company and these are how many stocks or shares are for offer, well, this divided by this equals your value per stock. Okay, that's that's long-term trading. And short-term trading means looking at charts, looking at graphs, dozens and dozens of them, and really assessing whether this stock is going to bump up or whether it's going to collapse or whether it's going to be volatile and where we should buy and sell. Now, in property investing, it's really remarkable. And, you know, I'm sure you, you will resonate with this. It's really remarkable that not enough or nowhere near this level of sophistication is used by certainly those 60 to 70 percent of owner occupiers but even the 30 to 40 percent of investors right even the 30 to 40 percent of investors who are buying and selling property for the express purpose of making money positive cash flow and capital growth to develop a passive income for themselves and their families even of the 30 to 40 percent of investors the vast majority i'm gonna say probably 90 percent plus are not looking at the data they are not looking at the trends they are not looking at the graphs they are not looking at the charts they do not know a where to get the data and even if someone you know dumped it in front of them how to interpret that data how to interpret the different factors what are their relative weightings? How do we know whether a factor is strong, weak, or indifferent? You know, um, how do we interpret the trends? Just because a factor is strong right now, is it gaining or is it sloping? Is it declining? Right? So just like in the stock market, we analyze charts. And, you know, if you do a quick Google search, there's all these, um, you know, all this jargon for how you can read charts and how you can interpret it. And it, it's like a huge science. It's not perfect. No one's really cracked the code to say predictably we can make money every single day in the stock market. But there is a very, very, very close and precise and refined science to how to make money in the stock market using data, right? Factors, their relative trends, their relative weightings, how strong, weak or indifferent they need to be all together for us to say, yep, <clears throat> this stock is actually going to to do well similar to that now in 2020 we have ample data available to us in the property market go back 10 years go back 15 years you had to rely on population growth trends you had to rely on proximity to parks schools shopping centers you had to rely on proximity to cbd which doesn't matter at all i'll um, do a post on that on that soon you had to rely on these sort of blunt instrument measures to say all right um this suburb is probably going to do well over the super long term in the short term if it does well well that's a bonus all right but now fast forward 5 10 15 years in 2020 in fact for the last five years <clears throat> we now have ample data we now have enough information we have enough charts enough graphs and i'm not just meaning yield and capital growth history and um, vacancy rates and things i'm talking you know and just to give a tip of the iceberg days on market developable land supply um, stock on market average vendor discounting job advertisements income increases the type of, of professionals that are increasing in that particular area etc etc we can digest this information and actually very 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 scientifically assess whether this suburb is going to do well, whether this property is going to do well, whether it will give us positive cash flow now and in the future, but also, and in fact, somewhat more importantly, whether it will give us capital growth. We want that thing to go up and take equity in the first two, three, four years, right? So the main purpose of this video is just to say there are not billions, probably tens of millions of people worldwide investing in the stock market using science, data, sophistication algorithms but almost no one is doing that even amongst investors in australia so 
you know, if you if you do want to do that, then you put yourself so much uh, in advantage compared to owner occupiers, but even you know, in such a more superior position to the vast, vast, vast majority of investors. Because I tell you, even 90% of buyers agents aren't looking at this data. They just have their own patch in which they know each house really well, but still it's just that patch. What if there's another patch, suburb, location, etc., that will do well, that will do better, okay? So the, the key takeaway from this video is that if you're not looking at sophisticated data, you are leaving money on the table. You are purposely saying, I don't really care about my property investing. You're treating it like a place to live. And that's really not how you should be going about it if you're a property investor. Okay, so if you already know how to do this, go ahead and do it, right? Make sure you do it. But if you don't know how to do this, then I'm happy to help you. I've formed a system um, that is makes it very easy to understand. Oftentimes when people talk about data, including myself, a whole bunch of people become a little bit overwhelmed, their eyes glaze over all data, maths, you know, algebra, all this stuff. It's, you know, you know what, like, even if I'm leaving $100,000 on the table, let it be on the table. It's, I don't want to deal with it. But when that data, that system, that formula, those steps have become simplified so that the average person can understand it, then there's really no excuse for you to leave money on the table, okay? You can buy high growth, high positive cash flow property predictably using data. And if you can do that yourself, then I encourage you, do it. But if you can't do that yourself, then I'll leave a, 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 a link below and click it. And if you feel that you vibe with me, then I'm happy to help you. You can jump on a call with me. Also, if you don't vibe with me, there's I don't know of any. There's plenty of courses out there. I don't know of any, but um, try to do it yourself. You know, it's always better to do it yourself. It's free, right? So who's going to say no to that? But if you do want help, a predictable way to do this, then then reach out. Um, and so once again, if you have any comments or, or questions, just comment below. I really want to hear from you. And also, if you liked this video, if it was useful, if it was inspiring, Give a, a like or love so you get more of these types of videos in your news feed. And same with YouTube, leave a, a subscription below. All right, guys, my name's PK and I help people buy high growth, high cash flow positive property using data so that they can build a portfolio. Um, catch you later. Bye.